student at Iowa State. I'm a summer gardener here at the gardens and today we're going to be talking about uh, compost tea, how to make it, and what it can do for your vegetable garden. Alright, first thing we're going to need uh, when making your compost tea is some uh, aquarium supplies that you can get at any um, retail outlet that sells aquarium supplies. These are pretty basic things so uh, it shouldn't be a problem finding them. Uh, what we have here is a, just a bubbler, an aerator, uh, with the four pieces of hose. Uh, this bubbler connects into what's known as a gang valve, which basically splits the, the air into three different uh, hoses for us. And at the end of each hose, we have a bubble stone that'll keep the hoses from getting clogged. Um, the first thing we, we're going to need to do, since we're using tap water, we need to dechlorinate the tap water. So basically, we're just going to put the bubblers in the water for about an hour. That'll dechlorinate the water. I have a terracotta pot here to kind of hold the hold the bubble stones down to the bottom, and we'll just let that sit for about an hour. All right, we've let our uh, water dechlorinate. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is add our dechlorinated water to our compost. In our compost, you want to start with a good, well-managed compost uh, that has a lot of the active bacteria growing in it, because that's what we're actually going to try to be promoting the growth of is that bacteria. We want it to grow and multiply, and that's actually what benefits the plants. So we're just going to pull the bubblers out of here for a second. And uh, I'm basically starting with a five gallon bucket that's about, it's about half full of uh, good compost there. And we're just going to pour our dechlorinated water into the bucket. Leave a few inches at the top. Then we're going to need a stick. We want to give that a stir. That's going to loosen up all the little nutrients, all the bacteria, to get them swimming in our tea. The one thing we do want to add is about one ounce of um, non sulfured uh, molasses. That's going to give that bacteria something to feed on for the three days that this is going to bubble. So we'll let that uh, get all stirred in there. Then we want to put the bubblers back in. Uh, the, the bubblers are very important. It keeps the, keeps the tea aerated. That gives the bacteria basically uh, something to breathe while it's growing in there. Um, and if your tea is not aerated properly, you'll know it because it'll start to kind of have a, a smell like it's decomposing. Uh, you don't want that. Uh, your compost tea should have a nice, earthy, sweet smell to it. Um, and basically that's all we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna maybe stir it a few times a day for three days, uh, and then we're gonna strain it out. Uh, you can let it go longer for three days to uh, promote the growth of extra bacteria, but you'll need to add, add a little bit more molasses to it. Alright, uh, we've been, uh, it's been three days. We've been stirring it about three to four times a day. We can go ahead and take the bubblers out. And uh, we're going to give it one more stir. One more good stir here. Just let it sit for about 20 minutes. That's going to give uh, all that compost a chance to kind of settle to the bottom. And then we're going to come back and strain out our tea. All right, we've let that sit. We'll go ahead and strain out the, uh, strain out the salads. I've got a net here that I'm going to be using. Uh, you can also just use an old pillowcase or I've even used uh, pieces of burlap just to kind of strain out the salads. And just kind of carefully pour that into the, whatever you're straining it through. And you can kind of stop once you start getting a lot of salads dropping in. 
Now, the salads can actually go, uh, you can mix them into your soil right away, or they can go right back on your compact, compost pile, uh, whatever you want to do with those. But this is the stuff we want right here. Now, this method will give you about two to two and a half gallons of compost tea. Um, you're going to want to use it within an hour to two hours of finishing it. So maybe you want to plan your week so you start the brewing process on a Wednesday. That way, Saturday afternoon, you'll have a chance to go ahead and apply it to your plants. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can apply this. Um, one is as a root, root drip directly into the soil. Um, benefits there is you're adding all that bacteria into the soil, which is going to help break apart uh, the organic material in the soil, uh, releasing micronutrients. And another way that's still being studied is um, loading it into a, into a spray bottle and spraying it directly onto the uh, leaves of your plants. Um, some studies have said it helps uh, reduce fungicides and uh, other plant diseases. Um, so that's our compost tea. Um, it's kind of uh, going through a bit of a fad right now. It's very popular. Uh, it's, you know, it's an organic fertilizer. Um, it's very popular on the West Coast right now. There's actually stands cropping up and um, where you can stop and buy compost tea and take it home and apply it to your vegetable garden. Uh, there's also professional um, prefabricated compost tea makers that you just add the ingredients to and you set it and it'll go for three days and when it's it automatically makes your tea for you automatically stirs it and keeps it aerated for you um, so there's a lot of studies being right now to see exactly what the benefits are um, but to be but to be sure the micronutrients are going to be in here that uh, you won't get from a lot of your general uh, fertilizers so um, that's the compost tea I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Growing at Ryman Gardens. Uh, for more information on Ryman Gardens, please visit us at rymangardens.com. If you'd like to know more about compost tea, there's plenty of information on the web available. Um, just look it up and happy growing.